Stan Jebelisco here. Uh, I'd like to explain the basic concept behind an oscillator, an oscillator circuit. Well, an oscillator really is nothing more than an amplifier with positive feedback controlled in such a way so that the feedback takes place at a single, stable, constant frequency ideally with a minimum of harmonic content that is a good sine wave and it will work reliably that is to say when you turn it on it will start oscillating right away well the original concept of an oscillator is shown right here in this particular case uh, the oscillator circuit itself is a lot older than junction field effect transistors. The original circuits used vacuum tubes, but I have decided here instead for the active device to show you an N-channel junction field effect transistor, or JFET, which uh, bias-wise works very much like a vacuum tube does. Bias meaning the relative voltages on the electrodes, although the actual voltages are much lower in the case of a field effect transistor, of course. Uh, probably about 12 volts will do it, whereas with a vacuum tube you might have had 120 volts or 240 or even 600 volts. So, needless to say, it's a lot safer to work with JFETs than it was with vacuum tubes, but the original concept was make an amplifier, make a, an amplifier with considerable gain. That is to say, it would amplify quite a lot and then take some of the output and feed it back into the input in phase. Now you need to make sure that that feedback occurs in phase. That is to say, when you take the output which comes from the drain of this device and you let it go back into the input, you need to make sure that the wave of the fed back signal coincides in phase with the wave of the signal that is used to generate the input. If you reverse the windings of these transformers, uh, or of this transformer, if you re reverse one of the windings, you're going to get negative feedback. So you, you connect it one way, uh, when you build a practical circuit with this transformer, best thing to do is to try it, see if it works. If it doesn't, reverse these connections right here and reverse the phase of the input. Or alternatively, you can reverse these two connections and reverse the sense of the winding and uh, see if you can make it work. The tuned circuit is formed by this variable capacitor and this winding of the transformer in the case of a radio frequency oscillator. And what we have here is the most basic type of oscillator circuit known as an Armstrong oscillator. It operates just according to the very most basic concept. Take some output and feed it back into the input and make it literally chase its own tail. Make the signal go round and round and round in here. The uh, the source of the field effect transistor is connected through a current regulating resistor. That's this thing right here. This capacitor ensures that the source will remain at signal ground even if it's not at DC ground. This particular resistor right here provides bias for the drain to produce a class A amplifier. You want it to be class A so that it'll have as much gain as possible. And then this resistor right here Again, it's a current regulating resistor, keeps the uh, system from burning out that field effect transistor with too much current or overloading the system in such a way that it won't oscillate anymore. So you, you choose these values by trial and error, the tuned circuit. In this case, it forms a series circuit, a series tuned circuit. So that tuned circuit will determine the frequency at which the oscillation takes place. It, tends to allow only one particular frequency or to greatly favor one particular frequency. So when you feed back the output, it's going to all concentrate itself at the frequency determined by this capacitor 
and this inductor. And there's actually a formula <coughs> for resonance to determine the resonant frequency. And in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, I <coughs> present you with that formula. <coughs> so <laughs> you will understand how to make that thing oscillate at the frequency you want. And if it's a variable capacitor, of course, you can vary the frequency. This is a rather primitive oscillator circuit, but it will work. The best way to key it on and off, if you, for example, you wanted to send Morse code, there are two ways to do that. One way is to put the key right here, the Morse code key, for example, and break the circuit here at the feedback loop. The other way, and probably the more effective, more uh, circuit sound, more engineering sound way is to key it at the at, at the actual source so that you deprive, a, deprive it of its uh, source of current altogether and you literally turn the entire circuit on and off like a switch. You can do it either way. Uh, but the added advantage here is that your uh, Morse code key is going to be at signal ground and direct current ground so you, when you bring your hand near it it isn't going to influence this frequency. Your stray capacitance from your body and your and the stray inductance uh, coupling from your body will not be a good thing in a radio frequency oscillator like this. Could change the frequency. This capacitor right here allows you to take the radio frequency output signal off without having any DC appear across this output. So you can feed it to the next stage, the amplifier, uh, the buffer, uh, whatever you, wherever you want it to go, the mixer, wherever. But you will rarely see this Armstrong oscillator anymore in actual practice. Nowadays, uh, of course, uh, in modern uh, digital radio equipment, you're going to see frequency synthesizers. You're not going to see analog oscillators like this very often. But this will demonstrate for you the basic principle of an oscillator. You just take an amplifier and feed back some of the output back into the input in phase. And use a circuit that will help determine its frequency. Once again, my name is Stan Gibilisco. That's, uh, that's an Italian surname, by the way. The book, Teach Electricity and Electronics. Typing and talking at the same time is a little bit like chewing gum and walking at the same time. Well, actually, I can chew gum perfectly well and walk at the same time, but I have a devil of a time. What I really have a lot of trouble with is manipulating a mouse at the same time I'm trying to talk with someone, particularly if I'm trying to click on all these little, uh, all these little features that you might find in a program click on this, click on that, and talk to somebody at the same time. Oh my, I just have a terrible time with that. Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Get the most recent edition. And if you're of a mind to, you can visit my website. It is at sciencewriter.net. You can capitalize the S if you want to. It'll still go there. You don't have to, though. I don't believe it's case sensitive. I've never really tested it, though. Or www.sciencewriter.net. Go there. You can find some of my other books uh, on Amazon linked from that website. And in addition to that, uh, I have provided for a number of my books explanations for the answers to the quizzes at the ends of the chapters online on the web and they're right from my website go here and you can't miss it quiz explanations i've also offered for su for these same books for most of them um, video explanations for the answers to the final exam questions the fifth edition of teach yourself electricity and electronics has all those explanations for all 30 some odd chapters in the book 20 quiz questions per chapter, an explanation for every single one of those, and 100 videos explaining the answers to the 100 
final exam questions. So enjoy and hope you, you find something out from this book that maybe it'll help you in your engineering ventures, your studies, and everything like that. <clears throat> and you might also want to visit some of my other videos on YouTube where I've uh, ranted and raved about various aspects of electricity and electronics and other things. Or not. Stan Jibalisco, signing off from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Till next time, so long.